let's fire up the worryometer. One to ten, one being we're not worried at all. Ten, we are extremely worried about this player. George Kirby, back to back rough outings. This one at the Blue Jays. Four innings, five runs allowed, three strikeouts, only four swinging strikes. Did, did give up some hard contact. Ninety point six average exit velocity against pretty standard pitch mix. I, I didn't really see anything that that stood out to me, Chris. Where are you at, George Kirby, on the worryometer? I saw a, a tweet from, I think, Ryan Divis, who covers the Mariners today, and it was the strike zone plot for all of George Kirby's pitches with two strikes. And I think 20 of 30 were in the strike zone. You don't need to do that. I don't know. Maybe he faced 30 or 20, 3 two counts, and he couldn't. But like, I think he pitches too much in the strike zone. And my galaxy brain take on George Kirby has always been that he would be a better pitcher if he gave up more walks because it would mean that he was chasing whiffs and, and chasing chase, I guess would be the way to say it. But yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, I get, here's my question. If George Kirby was just Aaron Nola, would we be okay with that? Or would we be disappointed? I think where people were drafting Kirby this year, they'd be disappointed. Oh, Yes. But that might just be what he is. Like, he's got good but not incredible stuff. He's got great command, but he probably pitches in the strike zone too much. And I think there are just going to be days like this when he's not able to get whiffs in the strike zone and, and it's going to turn on him. I think he's a very, very good pitcher. I wasn't drafting him as a top 10 or top 5 guy, so I'm not too concerned, but... If you had him as a top five guy, yeah, I I think you're concerned that he's gonna that he's not gonna live up to that potential. Did you give us a number, Chris, on the worryometer? Probably not. Let's say four. Yeah, I'm not worried either. And I have a few shares of him. He wasn't a main target. He was kind of like if he falls to the right spot, kind of mm -hmm. thing. I'll I'll put him a, a three on the worryometer. I agree with you. It's just it feels like we might have to live through some of these up ups and downs until he starts to do what you said and mm -hmm. try and get supposing batters to chase pitches a little bit more. And I don't know, maybe uses some of those secondary pitches a little bit more as well. Let's talk about some relievers. We haven't done that uh, usually this early in the podcast, but David Bednar does not look right at the moment. He got mm -hmm. the ninth inning with a two run lead. He gave up four earned runs. He took his third blown save first loss. I was watching this game. Command is way off. Mm -hmm. My guess is that he's rusty after missing most of spring training with that lat injury. It doesn't, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing, but Aroldis Chapman is off to a fantastic start and obviously has closer pedigree. Where are you at, Chris? David Bednar on the worryometer. I'm certainly not a zero. But like you said, I, I think it's probably just like rust or a mechanical issue that, that can be fairly easily solved because you missed most of spring training. Velocity is fine. You know, velocity today was down like 0.1 mile per hour from last year. So nothing too concerning there. But you just look at the the strike zone plot and it's just the curveball especially was just all over the place. He couldn't throw that anywhere near the strike zone. It was and like terrible. wasn't keeping it down. You know, like if if you're going to miss with a curveball, you want to miss down and everything was letter high. And so I think he's just not right and if you want to sit him i think it makes sense but i'm certainly not dropping david bednar so i'd probably say a, a five on the worryometer yeah i was gonna say something around there too i mean he is such an established closer i think he's gonna have a a pretty long mm -hmm. leash here unless it turns out that he's still dealing yeah. with that lat injury which as of now we have no reason to believe that um but yeah i i think maybe the pirates give him a few days off to to clear his mind or whatever but oh, i'm not overly worried about him uh, so far can't say the same about Jose Leclerc who got the yeah. 19 with a one run lead. He gave up a two run Homer. One of Shay Langoliers three home runs tonight uh, took his first blown save second loss of the season. Leclerc's ERA through five appearances, 14.4. And that's, that's, is, that's too high. This is for the defending world series champions. Obviously they have aspirations of getting back to the postseason, back to the world series. They might have to make a trade at some point for a reliever. Uh, but David Robertson and Kirby Yates have both pitched well as setup men so far. They both have closing experience. 
Chris, where are you at? One to 10 on Jose Leclerc. Eight or nine. Uh, I, I would prefer not to drop him, but if I'm setting my lineup right now, there's no way I can start him. He has six walks to four strikeouts in five innings. He's given up six hits. He's giving up actually not that much hard contact. Um, so I, I guess that's a good sign if you're looking for one, but the the command clearly isn't there. And and look, the, the difference between him and David Bednar is one, I just think David Bednar is a better pitcher. But two, Bednar entered the season without any questions about who was the closer for his team. And Jose Leclerc, it wasn't until... Did they ever name him officially the closer or was it just they got to the start of the season and they used him as the closer? But I, I don't think there was ever like a this is our closer statement was there i don't think so either it was we, we remember talking about it in the spring and thing that we we talked about that it was weird but we assumed yeah. he was the guy and so yeah given how much he struggled early on i wouldn't be surprised if the next save opportunity goes to someone else you know goes to a, a david robertson yeah i i just searched him up on twitter jose leclerc just to see if there were any quotes after the game and Says here, sounds like Bruce Bochy is sticking with Jose Leclerc in the closer role, as he probably should. I get the frustration, but it's early. Don't want to crush his confidence. Um, and then Jose Leclerc waiting at his locker for the media said he feels better mechanically than he did the first two games and is getting better every day. But, quote, it's time to do it. I've got to do something different to start to get better. So, mm -hmm. obviously, it's, it's kind of, it's on red alert right now. But, man, if we see one more blown save, I yeah. mean, wouldn't surprise me if they kind of spent up there. It could just be Kirby Yates too. You know, that, that's part of the problem. If you're looking to speculate is I'm not sure who would be more likely Yates worked the eighth in this one. So, you know, I, I don't think this is a situation where you're actively looking to stream Robertson or Yates until we see something more actionable. Let's talk about Vinny Pasquantino and normally Chris, I would give players with a track hitters specifically with a track record, at least the first month of the season. Let's see what happens. The difference here is that Pasquantino is coming back from so shoulder surgery mm -hmm. last year. So there could be maybe a little bit of concern. He went 0 for 4 with a walk on Tuesday. He's 4 for 37. That's a 108 batting average, zero extra base hits. Plate discipline still looks fine. Five walks to five strikeouts, but it's lots of ground balls early on. The average exit velocity is not terrible but it's not good either where are you at one to ten on Vinny p baby i'd say a seven i'm not dropping him but you know in looking at my rankings if i moved let me see i i, I did look at this earlier like i moved him behind spencer steer who's off to a pretty good start and has all that positional eligibility so i you know i'm that's a small move you know, up for steer and down for Pasquantino, but it's not nothing. And, you know, the, like you said, the plate discipline's fine. The quality of contact in terms of how hard he's hitting the ball is okay. 111.6 mile per hour. Max EV is actually higher than any he had last season. The problem is he hasn't barreled a ball yet and everything. I mean, almost literally everything has either been a ground ball or just kind of a weak fly ball. Right, he has a 57% ground ball rate, a 32% fly ball rate, a 7.1% pop up rate. And if you've done the math in your head, that only leaves 3.6% left over for line drives. So he's getting on top of or under everything, and and that's not going to work no matter how hard you hit the ball. So, yeah, I, I think it's concerning given the fact that he's coming back from shoulder surgery, given the fact that like he's not proven. We've we've had to do a lot of projecting on Vinny Pasquantino, and and I believe in his talent. I think he can be very good. He certainly was before the injury last year, but it's not like we've got a an eight year track record here for Vinny Pasquantino. We've got a couple of pretty good partial seasons, so I'm not dropping him, but I'm I'm not not concerned. Yeah, I agree. I would put him at a five on the worryometer. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm. I'm Concerned, but I'm not not concerned. So to me, uh, that's right in the middle for Vinny P. And I would be trying to send the lowest of the low by low offers right now on Vinny Pasquantino. Sure. I could, 
And I'm like you, I'm, I'm not dropping him uh, as of now.